When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will deliver him and give him glory. I will grant him length of days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome to Mass today on the first Sunday of Lent. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the hidden riches in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God spoke to Noah and his sons. See, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, also with every living creature to be found with you, birds, cattle, and even wild beasts with you. Everything that came out of the ark, everything that lives on the earth, I establish my covenant with you, no thing of flesh shall be swept away again by the waters of the flood. There will be no flood to destroy the earth again. God said, Here is the sign of the covenant I make between myself and you and every living creature with you for all generations. I set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I gather the clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant between myself and you and every living creature of every kind. And so the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all things of earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your path and teach me, for you are God, my Saviour. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. In your love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Christ himself, innocent though he was, he died once for sins, died for the guilty to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to life, and in the spirit he went to preach to the spirits in prison. Now it was long ago when Noah was still building the ark which saved only a small group of eight people by water and when God was still waiting patiently that these spirits refused to believe. That water is a type of the baptism which saves you now and which is not the washing up of physical dirt but a pledge made to God from a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has entered heaven and is at God's right hand now that he has made the angels of the dominations and powers his subjects. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. 
Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he remained there for forty days, and he was tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts, and the angels looked after him. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. The scriptures today tell us that the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. Now, when it uses the word drove, it suggests to me that the wilderness wasn't exactly the most desirable of places to be. The desert was a time of testing for Jesus to prepare him for stiffer tests ahead. It was precisely when he was at his weakest, he was hungry and most vulnerable, that Satan tries out a few choice temptations on him. The same is true of us. When we are often at our most vulnerable, he will try and entice us away from the path which leads to life. He knows our Achilles heel better than we do ourselves. But with God's grace, and that grace is readily available, if we survive the attack, like Jesus did, we'll be all the stronger next time round. Now, we voluntarily do penance during Lent in order to build up our resistance to sin. The Church talks about the concupiscence of the flesh. Now, what is this concupiscence? Well, it is part of the residue of original sin which we have all inherited from the sin of Adam. It goes with our fallen nature which finds forbidden things attractive. We hear a lot these days about the Me Too movement. Well, the concupiscence of the flesh which we all have is at the core of it. But it doesn't just apply to Hollywood directors, we're all tainted with it, young and old. I think teachers of PSHE in secondary schools need to be especially aware of this and perish the thought that education on its own on sensitive matters will keep temptation at bay for the young. It certainly won't. In fact, it may even have the opposite effect of inflaming concupiscence even more. Now, the following is a quote from the Catholic Catechism. And I quote, Man has a wounded nature inclined towards evil. A denial of this fact can only lead to serious errors in education, politics, social action, and morals. End of quote from the Catechism. Now, traditionally, the Church has taught that there are three triggers for temptation. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Now, the evil one is behind all temptation, but the raw material he uses is worldly status, power, pride in possessions, with the world of the flesh, pride in possessions and pleasures of the flesh. Now there is nothing wrong per se with the world and the flesh, but because of our tainted nature, indulging in worldly and carnal pursuits for their own sake can mess up our lives, and we can play fast and loose with our eternal destiny. 
Because I would say we're living in a rather self-indulgent age. The satisfaction of bodily appetites could take over our lives or it could take central place in our lives. Perhaps the present pandemic has put a break on this somewhat. When couples sidestep the sacrament of marriage, are they not leaving themselves more open to temptation, which St. Paul says is the opposite of the what the Holy Spirit wants? Jesus, if you remember, and his mother were invited to a wedding at Cana in Galilee. And as we know, things went a bit haywire at the wedding reception. But Jesus came to the couple's rescue at the behest of his mother. His mother said, do whatever he tells you. When sidestepping the sacrament of marriage and living together, couples thereby leave him and his mother out of the equation. And when problems al arise, as they invariably do, God knows who or what else they will actually turn to. Temptation, however, is here to stay, but Easter proclaims that Jesus has achieved the victory over the powers of darkness, the origin of all our woes. By resisting some temptation with his help, we draw on that victory. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of the venerable and sacred time of Lent, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, so without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in the peace of Christ.